Uh, hello, friends. So I'll be covering a few uh, key articles in nephrointensive care. So I was asked to give a talk on uh, key articles in nephrointensive care uh, in last one year in Calcutta. So, so I'll just uh, take you through some of the key articles that every trainee should know. So the topics that I would cover is uh, when you look at the renal space, so one important thing that uh, figures out in all the studies that have come is optimizing the timing of renal replacement therapy in acute kidney injury. So I'm sure every listener would know there has been a lot of debate on this and there are a lot of studies and these are all good landmark studies. So there are five studies that have come from 2016 to 2021. So I'll just take you through the overview of this. So this was an interesting article that came in critical care medicine, uh, looking at the renal kinetics as superior to lactate in hypotensive critical ill patients. And the third important space uh, where a lot of studies have come is in the fluids, uh, looking at balanced crystalloids uh, versus uh, normal saline. So this basics randomized control trial uh, came from the Brazilian group uh, in 2021 in JAMA. So it's a good trial. And then there was a plus trial also that's come from uh, New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand group. Uh, but I'll be only covering basics uh, in the interest of time. So when we talk about the optimizing the timing of renal replacement therapy, so as I said, there are five studies that have come between 2016 to 21. So the first studies that came in 2016 was the ELAIN study, which came from the German group and the Akiki study, which came from the French group. So this ELAIN study, which came from the German and the US authors is a single center study uh, in 231 patients where they took patients with stage two acute kidney injury. So the inclusion criteria in ELAIN was patients who are on vasopressors, patients who had severe sepsis and organ dysfunction, and patients who were in fluid overload. So this was the inclusion criteria for taking patients into this study, uh, along with the high uh, NGAL, which is a biomarker for acute kidney injury. So this was the inclusion criteria. So the results were fairly positive, favoring uh, the early usage of renal replacement therapy. So they had 231 patients so early RRT is where renal replacement therapy was initiated within eight hours as compared to late RRT of more than 12 hours. As you see, the 90-day mortality was significantly less in the group which got early RRT within eight hours. And even one-year all-cause mortality was significantly less in patients who got early RRT. So this raised a lot of enthusiasm that possibly one should initiate uh, renal replacement therapy early on than waiting uh, or delaying the initiation of RRT. So after this, the Akiki trial by the French group came in the same year, 2016. This was a much bigger study done in 31 ICUs, uh, including 620 patients. So the inclusion criteria here was patients had to be in KDGO stage three criteria of acute kidney injury who were mechanically ventilated and were on vasopressors. So they took much sicker patients, as you see, in this particular study, they took someone who were on ventilator and who were on vasopressors or both. So they were the very sick, typical ICU sort of a patient. So they had 620 patients. And as you see, it was a negative trial. The 60-day mortality in patients who got early RRT versus late RRT, there was no uh, significant difference, either you initiate early or late. And the late RRT here, they defined as where blood urea went up to more than 112 or patients had oliguria for up to 72 hours, so more than or equal to 72 hours. So this was the criteria for determining late initiation of RRT. So as you see, this French study debunked the ELINE study saying that either you start early or late, uh, wait until 72 hours of oliguria, it really did not make any difference. So for the listeners, keep an eye on the late RRT criteria, which is BUN more than 112, oliguria 72 hours, this becomes an inclusion criteria for the Akiki 2 trial, which came in 2021. So please keep this in mind, uh, which means they use this late criteria as an inclusion criteria for early RRT in Akiki 2 trial. So just keep that in mind. Then in 2018, the French group came with another study called Ideal ICU trial. Again, a big study, 29 ICUs and a reasonably large number of patients, 448 patients. Again, if you see these French trials, they took typical ICU sort of a patients as you see, the Kiki took patients who are on ventilator and who are on vasopressors. And Ideal IC also took patients with septic shock and acute kidney injury. And here, early RRT was defined as less than 12 hours and late RRT more than 48. If you see Elaine's study, uh, 
they took as uh, less than six hours and uh, less than um, more than 12 hours as the criteria as, as you saw uh, less than eight hours and more than 12 hours so here it took less than 12 hours as early rrt and more than 48 hours as later, late rrt 90 day mortality as you see there was no difference in this particular study also ideal icu trial uh, so again goes on to show either you start early or late so they are pushing the ballparks in line less than eight hours was taken as early and more than 12 hours was late here they took early RRT as less than 12 hours and late RRT they pushed it to 48 hours you'll see in the subsequent trials this ballpark keeps getting pushed to 72 hours so as you see 90 day mortality there was no difference then in 2020 much larger study came called start aki so this was done across the continents by the ANZIX group by the canadian trials group by the uk group and the irish trials group so it came in any in 2020 much larger study than these french groups so mammoth number of patients 2009 27 patients and they took patients who were in stage two or three kerigo uh, aki and here early rrt again was defined as this, as i've been telling the ballparks are being pushed in late rrt as you see early rrt was taken as less than 12 hours late rrt was pushed to 72 hours and even here they looked at 90 day mortality there was no difference between early rrt so only the elian trial which took less than 8 hours and more than 12 hours showed significant difference in mortality and one year mortality but the subsequent studies, which is a, a Kiki trial, ideal ICU and start AKI, even they push the ballpark of uh, late RRT to 48 hours and 72 hours, they really did not find any difference between the early and the late RRT. So until now, I think uh, the whole thought process of intensivists was, okay, we can wait uh, maybe up to 72 hours before jumping on to do RRT. Uh, and giving them an opportunity to convert oligoric to non-oligoric therapy, and that's what we tend to do in our practice, isn't it? So then this particular study came again by the same authors who did the Akiki 1 trial. They did an Akiki 2 trial in 2021, 39 ICUs, quite a big number of ICUs, but the number of patients enrolled were small, 278 patients. So if you see inclusion criteria, as I said, the ballparks are being pushed. So they took inclusion criteria as where patients had oliguria more than 72 hours. Because if you see, this was a criteria for initiation of late RRT. Here they have taken this as a criteria for early RRT. Okay, And then they took blood urea of more than 112 as an inclusion. So if you look at Akiki 1 study, so blood urea more than 112 or oliguria more than 72 hours was taken as a late RRT group. Here they took it as a criteria for early RRT initiation. And delayed RRT, the criteria was anyone who, who uh, where there was an absolute indication for dialysis, which is severe metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemia. Here, there is no, so it is fairly intuitive for everyone that you have to initiate dialysis. So, and they initiated dialysis when patients were really pushed to the wall or there was an absolute indication to initiate dialysis, which is metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemia, blood urea more than 140. Or someone who's had a pulmonary edema. Here, really, uh, there is no too much of thought that goes in uh, to save a life. You have to initiate dialysis, and they waited until then to initiate dialysis. The rate RRT, even so, there they saw the day twenty-eight RRT free days was more in early RRT as compared to late, which is good. So early, so you start early RRT dialysis free days was more, which is good. But then what they also found is the hazard of death so the, there was increased mortality in patients where they waited until there was an absolute indication to start dialysis because the hazard rate for death of was 1.65 and as you see it was statistically seen, which means we, you wait until there is an absolute indication that arises to start dialysis it would significantly increase the death in these patients so this was a strong message that came possibly waiting very late until an absolute indication arises for dialysis may not be good in ICU. So you need to have a middle path. Starting too early also may not be needed, but waiting for at least 72 hours and see whether there is going to be a conversion of oliguric to non-oliguric or whether there is, there is going to be a recovery and then initiating maybe a reasonable approach. So here in the discussion, uh, so they looked at AKI, Akiki study, ideal ICU and start AKI. So the author substantiated by waiting for 72 hours, RRT was avoided in 38.5% in delay, which means possibly that 20% of the patients 
would possibly may not have needed dialysis because they recovered as opposed to early RRT where 10% uh, RRT was avoided. So which means to say by waiting for a little longer time, maybe you can avoid dialysis in additional 20% of the patients uh, who otherwise would have been subjected to dialysis had you initiated early on. So which means to say it is prudent to wait for at least 72 hours where you can give that opportunity for additional 20% of the patients to recover. Uh, so that's what, because as you see, early RRT, 10% RRT was avoided. In delayed RRT group, 40% nearly was avoided. And 60% in the delayed group in START AKI, RRT had to be started because of metabolic acidosis and hypoxemia. And this is interesting. In Akiki 2 trial, as I said, the mortality in the late RRT group was much higher, 61.8% as compared to 48.5%. That was statistically significant. In ideal ICU uh, trial, 17% of them who needed urgent dialysis, where there was absolute indication to initiate dialysis, mortality was found to be higher. So even in ideal ICU trial, when they looked at the subgroup of patients where uh, absolute indication for dialysis was needed and was initiated, the mortality in that group was higher, which aligns to Akiki 2 trial where uh, it is prudent not to wait until an absolute indication for dialysis arises, like severe metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemia, or uh, uh, you have pulmonary edema. So that may not be the right thing uh, to do. So the authors conclude that it is possibly when you look at all these five trials, it is reasonable in patients with Kedigo stage three in ICU, RRT could possibly wait for 72 hours because you may capture additional 20% of the patients who may otherwise have, would not have needed dialysis and would recover with your prusamide challenge test or with optimization of fluid resuscitation or optimal management of septic shock, these patients will possibly get a window of opportunity to recover, uh, but provided the bun is maintained less than 112, because once bun goes to 140, then the risk of mortality increases. So that's the sort of conclusions we could derive. Maybe 72 hours with oliguria, you could observe very carefully and correct the underlying uh, insults that may be prevailing or underlying costs that may be prevailing and 72 hours appears to be a reasonable window for the patient to recover from the acute kidney injury. If recovery does not happen in 72 hours and urea is inching up more than 112, maybe that is the time one could initiate dialysis is what we could conclude from reviewing these five studies. So now very quickly, we'll talk about this very interesting study that came, renin kinetics are superior to lactate kinetics. This came in 2022. So the hypothesis for this uh, uh, trial was the change in renin is hypothesized as superior to change in lactate in predicting hospital mortality in septic shock or hypotensive patients. So we know worsening of lactate despite resuscitation portends a poor prognosis. So here the authors hypothesize that change in renin may be more superior. So this was a prospective observational cohort study. So here the inclusion criteria was they took all the shock patients, septic shock patients who are on vasopressors for more than six hours to maintain MAP more than 65. And the interventions, they did plasma renin levels at 24 hours, 48 hours, at 72 hours, and lactate levels were done as standard of care. So here uh, they looked at renin levels and lactate levels, and whenever the level was above the upper limit of normal, the association was drawn between renin and lactate by the logistic regression to see whether it had a bearing on the hospital mortality. So here they had, they did 197 renin levels were done and 148 lactate levels were done in 53 patients. And they, the, the association between the renin, the change in the renin to change in the lactate was done by slope of natural log by logistic regression. And here they found that the mortality uh, was better indicated. So the discriminatory ability of renin was found to be superior in uh, determining the mortality than in the log state. As you see, adjusted odds ratio was 10.35, attained statistical significance with renin, but did not attain with lactate. And they looked at area under receiver operating characteristics, and the initial renin levels had a better discriminatory ability than the initial lactate it, it, in determining the mortality and it attained statistical significance at 0 0.05. But when they looked at peak renin and the peak lactate, both had a good discriminatory ability. But when they tried to compare between the initial renin and the peak renin or initial lactate and the peak lactate, 
whether there was a, a difference uh, or whether there was a statistically significant difference in discriminatory ability, there was no significant difference when you compared between the initial drain and pre drain. But the absolute levels of initial draining had a better discriminatory ability, and the peak drain, peak lactate both had a good discriminatory ability. And this is how the natural slope regression was uh, created for renin and lactate and as you see renin attained statistical significance and even they looked at the absolute levels of renin and they found that the renin levels more than 40 picograms per ml had a good correlation to the mortality or indicating non-survivors as you see the red bars are all the patients who were non-survivors who had renin levels more than uh, 40 picograms as compared to the green ones which had renin levels less than uh, 40 picograms and they were alive. Uh, so, and there, this is not the first study. So, the previous study, which came in 2017 by Beloma, showed increased renin uh, indicated uh, was an indicator of increase in the mortality. And there was this Belgian study from Gleason et al., which came in 2019, which also showed the change in renin uh, had a, a good discriminatory ability to indicate non survivors attaining statistical significance, but the change in lactate. Uh, failed to be a better uh, discriminatory indicator when compared to renin and sensitivity of change in renin was 100% as opposed to change in lactate which was 33 to 50% and negative predictive value of change in renin also 100% as compared to lactate which was 73. So all in all, so you have two studies to tell you that the change in renin levels appear to be more indicative of poor outcome than change in lactate, one from the Gleason et al and, the, and this current study. So the conclusions of the straw is the hypothesis that change in renin as compared to the change in lactate in 72 hours, a change in renin appears to be a better indicator of hospital mortality and renin more than 40 picograms per ml uh, indicated uh, the non-survivor group and each one unit increase in the in, in, in the in renin or the so, so logistic slope of the renin. Uh, showed increased mortality by tenfold. So each one unit trace uh, increased the mortality by tenfold is what the study showed. So that's about this interesting study. So maybe in days to come, we may have uh, renin, possibly we have to, this is a good sort of a study hypothesis even for our trainees. So one could look at how feasible it is to do renin levels in our uh, country and possibly we should do more studies to see whether it is a better prognostic marker. So now coming to the last uh, study, which has uh, made a lot of noise is the basic trial and the plus trial. I'll talk only about the basic trial, uh, which effect of intravenous fluid treatment with a balanced solution versus 0.9% uh, solution in critically ill patients. This came by the Brazilian group in JAMA. So the whole question remains, so there are a lot of studies, as you know, we will uh, very briefly cover that as well. Question remains whether balanced crystalloids versus 0.9% saline, if balanced crystalloids is superior in reducing 90-day mortality. So this has been a uh, roaring question now for all of us. So this was a large study done in 75 ICUs in Brazil between 29th May 2017 to 2nd March 2020. So the inclusion criteria was uh, patients who were admitted to ICU with one sign of hypoperfusion and they should have had one sign of fluid responsiveness along with one risk factors for AKI. So risk factors for AKI could be age, hypovolemia, hypotension or pre-existing acute kidney injury, uh, radio contrast, diabetic, so on and so forth. So one risk factor for AKI had to be present. So the background for this study is there were these two studies which came, split and smart trials, which has compared balanced solution precisely plasma light versus 0.9% saline. And here, uh, this split study came from the Australian group where they used 2000 ml in each arm and they found 90 day acute kidney injury. There was no difference between uh, the, the balanced solution and the 0.9 saline. And the SMART trial, which came from the US group, they used only 1000 ml in each arm of uh, plasma light and 0.9%. And here they showed that uh, normal saline group had increased in the 30 day adverse kidney event, uh, composite of uh, adverse kidney event, which included death or new onset of RRT or kidney dysfunction. So this was the dichotomy that prevailed. The split trial basically showed that uh, there was no difference, but the, then this US study, a uh, smart trial uh, showed that the composite endpoint of kidney dysfunction was worse in 
percent saline group. So to answer this and to sort out this dichotomy, uh, the basics group did this study. So this was a two into two randomization which compared plasma light versus 0.9 percent saline. Here, interestingly, uh, the two groups were compared and they, they compared two infusions, rapid infusions and slow infusion. Slow infusion is where they gave at 333 ml per hour. The rapid infusion they gave at about one liter per hour as a rapid and see whether there is any change with rapid infusion because the hypothesis is rapid infusions can disrupt the glycocalyx and can worsen the outcome. So to test that, I think they have done this uh, two school and uh, patients were followed up for 90 days. So it was a big study, 11,052 patients. As you see, the 90 day mortality, there was no difference between the balanced solution and 0.9% solution. And they looked at selected secondary outcomes, uh, RRT within hospital admission, day three KDGO score, day seven KDGO. There was no difference between balanced solution and uh, sodium chloride. But And they did the subgroup analysis in sepsis. Even there, 90 day survival, there was no difference between the saline and the balanced solution group. And here they looked at uh, uh, the groups which had got more than 1000 ml of saline even before randomization to see whether that acted as a confounder. Even there, they did not show any difference between the balanced solution and saline group. But what uh, really came out of this study was when they did a subgroup analysis in sepsis, there was no difference. In traumatic brain injury, the saline group had a better outcome. If you see the balanced solution, the mortality was 31.3% as compared to the saline where it was 21.1% and that was statistically significant. It goes on to show maybe in TBI, so saline seems to be much better off than the balanced solution is what uh, came out of this study. And then they looked at the groups where they compared between the slow infusion versus the rapid infusion. Even their 90 day mortality, there was no difference. And they looked at all the secondary outcomes between the slow group and the fast infusion group. And they did not find any difference with regards to any of these secondary outcomes. So either you give slow or fast, it really did not make a difference in outcome. So the strengths of this trial was it's a large randomized controlled trial with a very good randomization. And there was very minimal loss to follow up, only 0.5% were lost to follow up. And it had a very good uh, preprint statistical plan. But the weakness of the study is the median duration of median quantity of fluid they gave was uh, about less than one liter per day. At 24 hours, each group only got 1.5 liter per day of either balanced or 0.9% saline. At 72 hours, the amount of fluid they got was only around 2.9 liters per day, which is fairly less. And the severity of the patients also was very less. As you see, the median aperture was only 12, which means they were very less sicker patients. So they did not take a typical sick ICU patients. And these patients were predominantly routine elective, 50% of these patients were routine elective surgical patients. And 40% of them were not even hypotensive. Possibly they did not even need this resuscitation fluid. Uh, so, so all these become the weakness, whether this really tested uh, the hypothesis of uh, any difference in the sick group of patients because they fairly took a stable sort of a patients. And the whole hypothesis of balanced solution being superior to saline is the chloride, which is being touted as uh, causing more harm in saline group. And the chloride levels was higher in 0.9% saline group in this, but you know how much higher? It was only higher by... 108 milli equivalents because the normal chloride level is around 105. So the chloride levels was only high by two. And to say that two milli equivalents rise in chloride level contributed by normal saline would worsen the mortality becomes superfluous. So this is the whole big limitations because the chloride levels even at around less than one liter or about one liter per day really did not increase the absolute chloride level in the body to uh, to determine or to be causing acute kidney injury, uh, which is being hypothesized as uh, harmful. So, so that is something which did not occur in this group of patients. So that becomes a very important weakness. So the conclusions the authors drew in the basic study was the balanced crystalloids when compared with saline uh, in this group of patients, last group of patients, there was no reduction in 90 day mortality. And even either you give a slower infusion at 333 ml per hour versus faster infusion did not have any bearing on 90 day mortality. And what came out from this study was possibly when given a choice between balanced solution and the 0.9% saline. Uh, so saline appears to be safer in traumatic brain injury is what comes out. Uh, 
so the take home message for all the listeners is optimizing the time of renal replacement so just to recap 2016 elian trial aki kit trial 2018 ideal icu 2020 start take ki 2021 aki ki when you put all these five studies together possibly there is no benefit with preemptive early rrt initiation it is prudent and reasonable in patients with kedigo stage 3 who come to icu rrt could possibly wait for 72 hours with with a close watch with a vigilant watch on the blood urea not to inch up more than 112 as long as it is less than 112 you, you could possibly wait because you could possibly convert 20% of additional patients uh, for in not going into dialysis and then after some hours you could possibly take a call uh, that uh, if they still remain oligarchic you may have to initiate dialysis and with renin kinetics it appears the change in renin levels appears to be more superior to the change in lactate in determining mortality within 72 hours and more than 40 picograms of renin had a good correlation to indicate non survivors so thank you one all one and all so i end with this beautiful quote so learn to be silent let your quiet mind be silent also so thank you all